ten horns. We know that is the beast from Revelation 13. So if you want to make a little note there, you can. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls because Babylon's got to look good. She is eye candy. She is the spirit that will be in a church that is all about the eye service and, and everything being pleasing to the eyes. When people come to that church, it's, they're not there for what they're going to hear, believe it or not. They're there for what they're going to see. This is why they got to put all that junk on. Is the light shows and the dancing and the, and uh, air and and how they decorate the 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 stage and all that stuff and they hire professionals to to come in and advise them on how to do that. They spend all that money on that stuff and it's all about eye candy. You go into a Catholic church, Catholic church. They they've been doing this for thousand years. Everything in that church is eye candy. It's gold. And it's all painted nice and the, these beautiful statues and the beautiful artwork that's in there. And people, people who are not even Catholic will come from around the world. They go visit Rome and they'll want to go to the Vatican. They'll want to go in, uh, St. Uh, Peter's Basilica and see this magnificent building that they have built up there for the glory of themselves. They can't, they're not telling me it's for God's glory. Not with what they do and what they get away with in there. By the way, if you've ever studied satires in the Bible, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 34, did you know that in the carved work of the altar that's in St. Peter's Basilica, they carved satires into the altar. Now, if you don't know what that means, you go study your Bible, you'll find out it's because the dragons are there too. You know who the dragons are, amen? All right, where was I? Oh, verse uh, 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination to the earth. And I'm going to preach to you this morning. Mystery is her name because there are things that she does not want you to know. Things that she does not want you to find out. You go into a Catholic church, they will, you will hear them talk about, oh, this is the mystery of the Eucharist. And it is a great mystery. And, and then we have the mystery of the sacraments. And we have the mystery of marriage. And we have the mystery of the priestly orders. And we have the mystery of this. And everything's a big mystery. And they will not tell their people. They will not tell them to go home and read their Bible and find out what that is. They will not give them scripture verses. They will give them uh, punchlines of jokes. And tell them stories of what saints said and everything else except the word of God. That's how you can tell that you've got... And by the way, so you understand, Babylon is a real spirit. A real spirit. Not just a, not just a, a philosophical idea. She exists. She is the opposite of the Holy Spirit of God. Wherever the Holy Spirit will lead and whatever the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into, her spirit is to try to drive you and pull you away from those things. When Jesus said, when He, the Spirit of truth, will come, He will guide you into all truth, then you can bet that Babylon, her spirit, is her job is to guide you away from the truth. So you're, there are things that you will never find out on your own. Uh, let's go to prayer. Father, we ask your blessings on this message. Lord, help me to preach it. Lord, I, I, I was zealous putting this thing together. And I pray, dear God, that, Lord, that you would help me. There was a time in my life when I was under or at least affected 
by that Spirit. And there were things, God, that I didn't know and things that that Spirit, Babylon, did not want me to find out. And I was in the wilderness. And God, I know what it's like to be lied to. I know what it's like to believe a lie. I know what it's like to live a lie. And I'd rather, God, tell the truth, live the truth, bear the truth. I'd rather people find out and know the truth about me than for me to live a lie in front of them. And so, Lord, deal with our hearts this morning. And Father, if anybody, if, if, if anybody will listen to this message, whether they're here or they're watching now online or they'll listen to it later on the net, internet, wherever, wherever it goes, God, if you can open one person's eyes. Father, if a man out in, in Samburu, Kenya, listening to this can be made free, from the bondage that he is in by Mystery Babylon. Father, then this sermon and everything it took to put it together, everything that I went through, God, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Father, would you birth some souls today for Jesus Christ? Would you bring some people in, Lord, to your kingdom? God, would you open our eyes to your word? And Father, help us to come out from underneath her drunken, her drunken stupor. And Father, may we ever stand against the spirit of Babylon in our lives, in our church, in our family, and in our country. Bless this message, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Proverbs chapter 2, very quickly, I want to move through some of this. And if you want to try to keep up, then just turn in your Bible real fast to Proverbs chapter 2 and read this with me. Because... the. Uh, as I've said before, I read Proverbs. God had me read it several times and it became apparent to me that God was showing the difference between two women. The virtuous woman, which is the church. The strange woman, which is Mystery Babylon. She's a harlot. She's a whore. She's a temptress. She's a liar. Proverbs 2.10 When wisdom entereth into the heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. You know what he's telling his son? He's telling his son, when you'll read your Bible, when you'll read your Bible, when you listen to the words that God gives you, God will put wisdom into your heart. He'll give you discretion. That means he will... Hey, young people, listen to me. God will show you the man or the woman that He wants you to spend the rest of your life with so that you do not make the mistake that is being made all over this world, all over this country, all over Jefferson County, all over this state. If we would just use discretion in who we chose to be our mates, it just stands to reason there would be a lot less problems. I'm not preaching that to anybody in particular. I am preaching it because it is the Word of God. And I'm required to say it. And then he said, uh, verse 3, he's talking about the evil man who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. How many of you have been in darkness before? Raise your hand. Did you enjoy it there? Maybe for a little while. Or you wouldn't have done it. But then after a while, you got to get out in the light. And what that means, and that scares us. Because that means that God is going to shine a light into places in our heart that we don't want to see. I'm telling you, best thing you can do is face that light. 
and let God show you what's wrong with you. Amen. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked. That's a snake. And they froward in their paths. Remember, froward is the opposite of two-word. You're either going to go toward heaven, or you're going to go froward heaven, toward hell. Okay? Froward in their paths. To deliver thee. The words of God, your Bible, are there to deliver thee from the strange woman. Even the stranger which flattereth with her words. See, she won't tell you the truth about you. She'll say, oh, you're so good looking, honey. And you're not. You're ugly. You're fat. You look, you walk like me, got a hunched over back. But she ain't going to tell you that. She's going to lie through her teeth to you to get you sucked in. Stranger, which flattered with her the words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth, here it is, the covenant of her God. You know what that means? She, she does not want the New Testament brought up because it's the saving grace of Jesus Christ. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths under the dead. Remember what I said a while ago about God is, is life and God is for life and God wants to give life. What spirit is it that brings death to this world? Babylon. She's the one killing all the babies. Proverbs 5, 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood. You know, I've never, I've never uh, had wormwood. I've never tasted it. There's the, the word used now for wormwood is absinthe. There's actually a liquor that's made from wormwood, from absinthe. And it is, um, it can be under certain ways be used as a hallucinogenic you know what hallucin hallucinogens are it's a false world that you live in for a while so you take things like lsd and all certain drugs and they get you high and they get you out of your mind a little bit well you're living in a hallucination and you're living in a and I want you to catch this. You live in a fantasy world where everything is how you want it. But the truth of it is, you are so much in pain and so much in bondage. Those of you who have had to deal with being hooked on drugs, you know that there is no feeling in the world like running out of your drug and not having another one ready. Because you know that you are fixing to go through hell until you get that next and that is that with alcohol waiting if you somebody drying out getting the DTs you hear them screaming moaning sick because they can't get another fix see she talked you into she used her honeycomb mouth, her sweet words to get you hooked on whatever drug she offered you. And by the way, meth and heroin and all that, marijuana, that's not the only drugs that are out there. Pornography is. That's a drug. She talked you into it, but her end... 
is like wormwood, it's bitter. And it's sharp as a two-edged sword. You drink or you get high because there's problems. When you're high, when you're drunk, whatever, the problems are gone. But when you come back down, where'd the problems go? Now they're worse. And so her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Verse 6, now watch this. This is now 12 o'clock. If, if it's your time to leave, go ahead. But you're going to miss the best, the part of this message you need to hear. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are, what? Movable, that thou canst not know them. So let's say that, um, let's say that Gary decided to move down here to Festus, and overnight, somebody went through and changed every street sign in the city of Festus. 